Everyone loves a good fighter. The fighter is just one of the most amazing martial classes that you have in the game. There is no bad way about going through a fighter. This fighter specifically that I have for you right here, this is going to be mainly focused as an endgame character. It's not that you're not going to be able to use this fighter throughout the rest of the game, but if you're going to be using a fighter throughout the rest of the game, then I advise for you to watch the link that I have in the video description, which is the fighter that I multi-class to be able to be more efficient since Act 2 of the game. This fighter right here is going to be efficient on the Act 3 of the game, the end game, and mostly what is going to be making a beast out of this fighter is going to be the itemization that we're going to be using, again, for this fighter. Itemization that you're mostly going to be finding in the Act 3 of the game. This is going to be a mono class fighter as well. And one more thing to have in mind is that if you want to use this build as a baseline for leveling up the, your fighter, your base fighter, uh, throughout the rest of the game, it's fine. It's going to work amazing. The thing is that for the rest of the game, the other fighter that I have on the channel, that one is still a little bit better. This is going to be a monster at the end game of the game, if that makes sense to you. That being said, I am going to give you some advices and things that they can change throughout the course of the game. We are going to be making some kind of respect around here and there with the suggestions that I am going to give to you for you to be able to get the most out of this fighter. Just to have in mind that the main focus of this thing is going to be overpowered at the end game of the game, being able to defeat all of those difficult bosses that I am not going to spoil for you, but there are some difficult challenging boss fights at the end of the game and there's many of them and I love them because yeah it's challenging. That being said we're going to start with fighter and on the fighting style we're going to be using great weapon fighting because this is going to give you give us an extra action uh, later on when we choose the class feat at level 4. But here are the stats and the reason for this being is uh, very simple. Now. If you are going to be leveling up from the very get-go, then this is what you would do instead. You would be placing the dump in all of those stats right there, and maybe up this little thing right here. This would be the baseline. We're going to be using the strength as our, uh, as our attack rules, dexterity. We're not going to be using dexterity for armor mainly, that is going to be for initiative. And then a constitution, constitution to be a little bit more tankier. These things, we're going to be using them as means of getting our saving throws. Although, on Act 2 of the game you have access to the Dexterity Gauntlets. The Dexterity Gauntlets also give you plus one to your attack rolls. So you're always going to want to be focusing on things that give you to plus one to your attack rolls or give you plus things to your attack rolls because the weapon feat that we're going to be taking that takes a hit on our, on our hit chance. So yeah, we're going to be dumping this as soon as you enter the Act 2 of the game and then we're going to be placing the remaining points into the rest of the stats for you to be able to bypass those little saving throws a little bit better. So this is going to be the baseline for Act 2 of the game. Now, on Act 3 of the game, you have access to the Gauntlets of Giant Heal Strength, which are going to give you a native 23 strength, meaning that you're then going to be respecting your character and change that thing to, for example, the 30 to get back that initiative that you would be losing because you're going to be removing your gauntlets. And uh, so, yeah, that is something that you would want to do. This is also going to affect the feats that we are going to be choosing, but we'll dive into those a little bit later. Furthermore than that, that is basically everything that you need to know about this fighter. The leveling is going to be very streamlined. At level 2, you are going to receive your action search, so that is amazing. At level 3, you are going to receive your first subclass, uh, your main subclass, which is going to be champion. You can either go for battle master or go for champion. Any of will work wonderfully. At level 4, you're really going to receive your first feature. Now, depending on the ability scores that we chose right here, uh, as you can see, I am using the baseline for the strength one because that is going to be the main thing that we're going to be using. But uh, regardless of the stats that you chose to take right here, remember this is thinking that we have the gauntlets of the giant heal strength, which is what the endgame build is going to be looking like. Then at level 4, you are going to be using your great weapon master. On the other hand, um, if you instead would go 
for the 16th strength, uh, you are leveling up this character, you wouldn't have dexterity, you would have the gloves of dexterity. At the end of the day, the, the first feat uh, that you are going to be taking is still going to be the Great Weapon Master. This is going to give you a plus 10 to your damage, and like I said, the gauntlets that we want to be uh, taking, the strength that we want to have, we want to have as max strength as possible, because that is going to negate the minus 5 attack roll that we're going to be receiving from this thing. This thing is also going to give us an extra attack every time that we kill or land a, cr a critical hit. We are going to have critical hits on demand with this guy. At level 5, we are going to receive our first extra attack, Meaning that at level 5 with a hasted character, we can do 4 attacks instead of just 2. At level 6, the amazing thing about fighter is that they receive a new feature. And then again, things might be different depending on you are respecting your character or, or not. If you haven't respect your character, if you're still leveling up and you would have your dexterity to 18 thanks to the gloves, then you would select the extra points into strength right here to increase your attack rolls. Always, always, always prioritize your attack rules. If on the other hand, you do not have, like, uh, you already are on level 12 and you already have your gauntlets of giant heal strength, then you could be popping up your dexterity a little bit more. Again, uh, like we have right here to increase our initiative or maybe increase your constitution. It really is not that great uh, important. And if you are level 12, there are some little things that you could be changing right here. So like, for example, heavy armor master, we're always going to be using heavy armor. So that is something, an extra something that uh, we could get. We would be dumping the strength increase by one. So that is something that we need to have in mind. And also, if you want to have a little bit of more DPS, you could also take the Savage Attacker. Just to have in mind that this is, but <laughs> redundance, having in mind that you already have your Gauntlets of Giant Heal Strength. If you don't, then just immediately pop up your strength a little bit more. At level 8, that is where we're going to get something extra amazing, which is going to be, again, the feature. And the same thing applies right here. If you're leveling up, you don't have your strength, you're going to place your strength right there, which is going to give you a level, let's say, 20 in strength. So that is going to be the maximum attack roll that you're going to have. And at this point, you should be on Act 2 of the game. If, on the other hand, you want to select the endgame version of the of the builds, uh, the previous one for the endgame version, we took the Savage Attacker, and then on this right here, we are going to be taking the uh, Heavy Armor Master, just to get that uh, uh, our diminishing damage on our magic attacks. So the, uh, I'm sorry, the non-magic attacks also decreased by 3 while you're wearing heavy armor, so just a little bit more tank in this. We're going to be dumping that point of strength, but that's okay. Now at level 10, we're going to receive another fighting style. This doesn't really matter that much. I mean, if you want to have uh, defense, well, actually, this actually does matter. You want to take uh, defense to increase your armor class by 1. It's just going to be 1, but I mean... It's something nice, just extra armor class, it's free. Now, at level 11, this is when the build is going to be fully established. This is when you are in Act 3 of the game. You're going to receive the improved extra attack. And basically what this means is that you're going to be able to have, mm, let's say, 9 attacks right here. If you have a hasted character. So you have your base damage. And then you get two extra attacks because of this class feature right here. And then the hasted action, that is going to be three more. And then the action search is going to give you another th three. So that is nine. And then if you kill someone or you deal critical hit with your weapon, uh, weapon master or great weapon fighting, you are going to receive a bonus attack with your bonus action with a total of ten attacks on the first turn. Do have in mind that, uh, well, we'll talk about that in the itemization section of the game, builds. At level 12, we are going to receive our final feature. Now, at this point, uh, you should not be having, like, the, the leveling version of the character, because this is when the build is fully established. And the final endgame build fully established, we have the Great Weapon Master, we have the Heavy Armor Master, we already have the Savage Attacker right there, so we have a little bit of our 
extra thanks for tankiness. And if you want to be even more tankier, I guess, you could either take points into constitution, which is going to be the very same thing as tough, or at least something similar to tough. This is going to give you more health. But the thing is that uh, I would prefer to go for the constitution in itself because the constitution in itself is going to give you a plus something through your constitution saving throws. So yeah, we're trading hit points because uh, of saving throws. So that is a little bit better. On the other hand, if you want to have uh, your dexterity right here, it's not going to increase your initiative right here. We have a plus three. If you go to 18, it's basically going to do nothing other than uh, helping you with your saving throws. So at this point on uh, level 12, we have this right here. This is what I like to go to. Now, I would say that the itemization section of the VL is going to be the most important thing of this thing. And uh, some of these items, we're going to get them early on, on the early acts of the game. And one thing that you need to have in mind about this build is that, uh, yes, you have lots and lots and lots of actions. But what does that, how th th would that matter on the build if you're not going to be able to move throughout the battlefield properly? So there are some things and changes that we're going to be doing right here for our fighter, for our warrior to be more deadlier, to be more uh, more effective. As for the armor, any armor that is going to give you the, the heaviest armor possible and the, the best look possible, then that is just amazing. You can get like uh, armor classes of 20 right here with the armor of persistence, which is something amazing. I do not advise, a lot of people like to use the Hell Dusk armor. I do not advise for you to use this thing on fighters because fighters already have the proficiency. The Hell Dusk armor, usually you would want to wear this thing with a caster because that's the ideal thing to do. If this thing negates, gives you the proficiency with armor while using this thing. So I wouldn't advise for you to use a fighter right here. I could be using something a little bit better with more armor class like this, but I just like the, the looks of this armor. So that is why I'm going with this one. Now, the most one of the most important things is that the rings. The rings, you're going to have the killer sweetheart which is going to give you a critical hit on the mana. This is going to be synergized with the Surgeon's Subjugation Amulet. This is going to paralyze someone every time that you deal a critical hit to an enemy. Meaning that once the enemy is uh, stunned right there with the critical, all of the following attacks that you do to him are going to be critical hits. So this is just going to break the game on levels above imagination. To have in mind that this is only going to work against humanoids and some humanoids they are resistant or immune to this thing so this is going to break some elites that are going to give you issue usually you should be focusing on the highest damaging highest level character of the party of the crew of the people that you're fighting paralyze them get rid of them and then move to something different but this is the synergy that this thing is going to give you now the crusher's ring the crusher's ring is going to give you mo movement speed we could be taking something that would give us like a little bit of extra dices in damage but you have in mind that you have more than enough damage right now with your with your fighter with the many actions that you have so you want to have movement speed Another thing that you could have is like, for example, if you want to swap this little thing, I wouldn't advise. You could also use the Misty Step Amulet right here to be able to move throughout the battlefield more freely. If you also have the Gith Yankee as your main fighter, Lazel is an amazing choice for this thing. They also have access to Misty Step as a ratio. The one thing that I want to stress how important it is right here is that you need to have enough mobility th throughout the battlefield to be able to use all of those 10 actions because it doesn't really matter that you have 10 actions if you're going to kill the things that are close by to you and then the rest of them are going to be away from you and then you already have you still have some actions right there that you're not going to be using uh, so this is basically what you want to do now that is basically the gist of everything for cloak you have the armor uh, that that is like the most important thing that i would like to to give you as a base the the weapon always use the highest damaging weapon that you can find uh, also if you are lazel if your fighter is a Gith yankee there's a whole bunch of amazing Gith yankee weapons throughout the game so that is something amazing as well and the gist of everything how the build is going to work is that we have enough mobility to be able to move throughout the battlefield freely throughout the battlefield 
and we're going to be killing things. Uh, usually you want to have a hasted character, some missing thing that you can do is like have a wizard on your, party, on your party that is going to give you haste. Also you can give a little bit of a magic weapon with your paladin maybe or shield of fate with your cleric. Uh, usually this is going to be like the frontliner and he's the one that should be receiving all of the buffs. But it's as simple as that, it's going to kill things, it's going to hit hard, it's going to attack 10 times and usually the fights are going to end in the first turn because of the sheer power that you're going to have with this thing. Also if you have two fighters in the party and a sorcerer you can twin cast twin spell to use them and they are just going to be sweeping throughout the battlefield like there is no tomorrow and they are going to kill things so fast that they are never going to know what is it that hit them because it hits like a truck. This thing, it really does. And also do have in mind that you should always be prioritizing the highest damaging, meanest, highest level character because you have your critical hits on demand. Sometimes the ability from the shield, the executioner or whatnot doesn't really work that well but that is why you have for example Lucky of the four realms uh, uh, you can either choose to take this one or, or not uh, it's something up to your personal preference if you want to add a little tadpole right here but this is going to give you another critical hit on the mana which is going to also give you access to that sweet sweet critical hit that we want and it really works with some of the highest level humanoid enemies not going to spoil which ones but you can potentially kill them in one turn because every single hit that you do to a paralyzed enemy is going to be a critical hit if you like the constants like and pretty super appreciate it no one has told you today that you're a gorgeous and beautiful person you are indeed a gorgeous and beautiful beautiful person i will be seeing you go then gorgeous and beautiful people next one a beautiful day and goodbye